There are some things that every Minecraft world should have, and in this video, I'll be showing you a bunch of ideas for 10 different builds, so let's get started. All right, so the first build that we'll be looking at, uh, of course, it's a base. Everyone's gonna make a base eventually in their world, and I'm just gonna quickly showcase a couple of the cool ones that I've made tutorials for on my channel. The first one here being the ultimate survival base. So heading on inside, a cool feature of this base is that we have this like quick area that you can kind of utilize. You can quickly come in and sleep. You got a little bit of storage, some furnaces, and all of your crafting blocks as well. Over here, we have our storage and crafting area, and then back over this way, we have our furnaces and enchanting area. Then heading upstairs, we have our indoor farms and also our brewing area. Up to the third floor, we have our indoor toggleable nether portal with a whole bunch of cool decorations. We also have a secret area over here as well. In here, we've just got like a bunch of barrels and chests. And then up at the final floor, we just have a bit of a storage area and uh, yeah. And for the second and final base I wanted to quickly show off is my most popular base, the ultimate underground survival base. And now uh, this one actually has a completely hidden entrance. All we have to do to open it up is chuck an item on top of this block right here, which will open up the door. And heading on inside, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of modular sections. So all of these could be moved around and placed in any different section that you like, which is probably the main coolest thing about this. We also have two separate floors with an elevator connecting them. And just to highlight a couple of things, we have a fully automatic sugarcane farm here, which feeds directly into one of your main storage sections. In here, we also have a super smelter design. And we also have a giant aquarium here that spans both of the floors as well, and also a toggleable nether portal. The next thing that every survival world will need at one point is a crop farm. Uh, maybe not this big of a crop farm. I've gone a little bit crazy here. But this is definitely a really cool design and like it's really easy to do and lay out as well. So we've just got these like massive squares of crops and we're just kind of alternating between them. And uh, it definitely gives like a really nice effect to your crop farm area. For the next crop farm, we actually have this fully automatic one. So as you can see, we have a villager on this side here and we would theoretically have one on this side. Uh, I don't actually know where he's gone. But yeah, so these farmer villagers harvest all of the crops here. They replant it and plant it. And then once their inventories are full enough, they'll start throwing it to this villager here. As you can see, it's a little bit messed up because mine's completely full. Uh, but yeah, so this villager, once he's full on crops, he'll be trying to throw it to this guy, but they'll instead be going into this hopper with a minecart here. And then they'll get sent through into the hopper below and then into the barrels on the other side, if I can reach it. There you go. And yeah, it's definitely just a really nice way to get some crops easily without actually having to really do much except for just build the whole thing, you know? Next up, we're going to take a quick look at two different mob farms. The first one here is one for an actual spawner. So if you found like a dungeon or something underground, and as you can see, we've encased it in this nice aesthetic design. So we have a lever over here that toggles the lights on and off. So you can turn it on and off if you wanted to. And so the mobs that are spawned will drop down into the water here. And then they'll be sent up this water elevator all the way up to the top. And then they'll fall down here with uh, basically half a heart. And you can smack them, get XP. And then the hoppers in here will send all of the items down into the chests down below. Now for the second mob farm, we have one that isn't utilizing a spawner, but is instead just utilizing like natural mob generation, I guess. So if we head on inside, I can kind to try and showcase you just please excuse me because we're on my hardcore world i can't really fly around at all but yeah in here as you can see we have multiple layers of these platforms that can spawn mobs on them we've also added all of these trap doors on the floors to stop spiders from spawning and clogging up the system here oh wow i completely forgot to remove this freaking uh giant pillar here oh whoopsie daisy but yeah so all of the mobs will eventually fall off thanks to these open trap doors they'll fall off down into the streams here and fall down into the hole lose a whole bunch of health in the process and then we can just head on down kill the mobs get a whole bunch of xp and and items in the process. For the next build that you will probably want to create in your survival world is a mine entrance. As you can see for this first one we have this nice design so we've kind of just added it in the side of this mountain here. We've added a nice staircase up into it as well and the main thing that makes this look really good is that we have elevated this so instead of it just being like kind of on the same level as the ground we've elevated it up a little bit higher and that lets us add a nice staircase up to it and uh yeah. And for the final mine entrance we have one over on my hardcore world here. I've actually been living inside of here for quite a while. And yeah, so this one's a lot smaller and simpler compared to all of the other ones, but we have utilized the same design. So we've added like a staircase up to it instead of just putting it down on the ground. It definitely makes it feel kind of more realistic, I guess. But yeah, so this one's in a different style. We've got like this kind of frame here with some spruce wood, and then we've added a little roof on, and then we have this nice kind of doorway as well that leads inside. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of trading hall designs. The first one here being inside of this little but uh, long building. So heading on through, as you can see, we just have have 
pretty much a whole bunch of uh, little stalls where the villagers can sit in. It might be a little bit tricky to actually get them inside of here, but once you do, it is a nice compact solution for having a trading hall design. For the second one, we just have a bit of a smaller version compared to this one, and it's also in a bit of a different style as well. It's a lot smaller, of course, but yeah, so we can just head on through the main entrance, and we have five different sections here for our trading hall uh, areas. All right, and for the final trading hall design, we actually have this massive one. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a lot bigger than the previous two, and we can hold a whole bunch more villagers inside. So as you can see on the bottom floor here, we have a massive capacity already. We also have a second and third floor where we have even more capacity for a whole bunch more villagers up here. Obviously, all of the job site blocks are missing. But uh, yeah, heading up to the attic now, as you can see, we have a little bit of storage up here as well, and then we have a whole bunch more spots for uh, some more villagers up here as well. The next thing you might want to build in your survival world is a nice aesthetic fishing dock. As you can see for this one, we have a pretty unique looking fishing dock. So we've actually got the main platform kind of above the land here. We have a nice little fishing hut here as well. This one's made to look more like a store. So um, we've got some like decorative things over here. We've got some invisible item frames with some fishing rods on those to look like kind of display items. And then we've got some smokers and chests and barrels and stuff everywhere. We've got our little stockpile storage area over here as well. And then for the actual fishing section, we have a nice little staircase that leads all the way down here onto our platform where you can dock your boats and fish. For the next fishing dock, we have one that is pretty much just entirely over the water this time. So we have this big main fishing dock area that leads down to our fishing platform over here. Then over this way, we have our boat docking area where we have a whole bunch of different sections where you can just park up your boat. And then over here, we also have a similar thing to the previous one. We've got like a little bit of a fishing hut, like trading stall shop thing as well. Another more aesthetic build that you might want to add to your world is a nice bridge design. Maybe you have like a river or a lake or something that you frequently cross. Maybe you just like kind of jump and swim across, but maybe you want to do it a little bit more aesthetically. And so that's where the bridge comes in, of course. And so for this first one, we're taking a look at a nice kind of aesthetic uh, overgrown design. So as you can see, the roof is entirely made out of leaves. We've also made it look like they've been contained by adding in some trapdoors on the corners and then some signs kind of connecting all of those together. And we have some leaves kind of draping over that as well to make it look a little bit more like uh, overgrown, but contained. <laughs> and so as we walk through the actual bridge here, as you can see, we've added some decorations here to make it look a little bit more lively. And yeah, for this next bridge, we have one that is pretty similar in length to the previous one, but it's actually elevated up a little bit higher. So the actual main walkway is kind of like elevated above the water, which lets us sail underneath the bridge as well. And something that makes this bridge a little bit more unique compared to a bunch of other ones is that we actually have a little bit of a pass through down here as well. Uh, it's not actually complete. There's supposed to be a door on this side. So uh, excuse me for that. But yeah, even though you might not actually really use these doors, it definitely just makes the bridge look really cool. And now for the final bridge, we have one that is uh, entirely different again from all of the other ones. This one's actually an underwater bridge. So I don't really know if it can be called a bridge, but uh, I mean, it still just connects two different parts of land. Instead of going over the water, you're going underneath the water. And uh, yeah, it's definitely just a really cool and unique different way to make a bridge. So uh, do with this build what you will. The next thing we're taking a look at is a whole bunch of nether portal designs, something that you will definitely be adding to a world if you wanted to like, I mean, complete the game, I guess. But instead of just making like a boring old nether portal, why not add it into the side of a cliff like this one? So as you can see, we've actually hided the obsidian blocks by making them kind of like extend to the left and up and stuff a little bit higher and we've covered them up by using some stone in front of it. We've also added a whole bunch of leaves and stuff as some extra decoration to make it look a little bit more lively. And now for this next nether portal, we have one uh, that's pretty similar to the previous one, except this time it's in a cave and it's a little bit smaller. We've added a whole bunch of decorations around the place, like some vines. We've added some stairs and slabs to all of the walls to make it look a little bit more detailed. We've also added this nice little stream that kind of separates the nether portal side and then like the other side, I guess, over here. And yeah, definitely just like a nice lush nether portal entrance thing. And for the final nether portal, we just have something that's uh, a lot smaller than all the other ones, but it's definitely a really cool design. It's more of like a futuristic design. As you can see, we've employed the same kind of technique to the previous ones where we've covered up the exposed obsidian blocks by using like some other blocks in front of it. This time we've made it into a circle and we've encased all of the exterior blocks by using these, uh, I always forget if it's deep slate or blackstone, but yeah, by using these deep slate blocks and the walls to kind of make it look like it's being held up. And yeah, this design might not fit every world, but uh, yeah, it's definitely kind of cool. The next thing that you will probably have to build in your world at one point or another is a storage house. So no matter how big you make your base, you might end up having to expand past it. And uh, whether you do that inside of your base or within a kind of external separate base thing, it's up to you. But yeah, this is definitely a really cool storage house design. It's very detailed and intricate and uh, yeah, pretty cool looking. Heading on inside, as you can see, we haven't really gone with the most efficient route of just kind of stacking chests, but we've gone with a more aesthetic vibe with this one. So as you can see, we've got some hanging chests 
chests in the middle. We've got a bunch of barrels around the place as well. We've got crafting tables for ease of use in all of the corners. And then we also, of course, just have a bunch of double chests as well. And now for the second storage house, we once again have a pretty nice looking exterior. But as we head on inside, this time we have gone with the more efficient route and definitely still looks pretty aesthetic as well. So as you can see, we just have a whole bunch of double chests along the sides here. And then we've added in our crafting blocks down in the floor so that they're not really in the way. And at the back, we also have this nice little aesthetic shelf with a couple of barrels as well. Okay, and now for the final thing that you may want to build in your survival world is a massive town or village design. This is definitely something that will keep you busy for quite a while, depending on how big you want to make your village. As you can see, this one is a little bit smaller. We've added in a nice aesthetic river that kind of runs along the side here. And then we've also added one along the back as well that kind of creates this little island that the entire village is on. So as for the village, we have a couple of different house designs. We've got this really small one. We've got a bit of a bigger one. And then we have our biggest one over here too. Towards the bottom area of the town, we have this nice custom tree design as like a bit of a town center. We also have a couple of market stalls over here. We have a nice custom cliff design as well that kind of lines the uh, edge here. And then we also have these massive sprawling crop farms at the top. We've got like carrot over here and then some more carrot over there as well. Next, we actually have a custom desert village design. So maybe if you just like the desert more for whatever reason, then we uh, have another one here for you. So entering the village, as you can see, we have a nice little dock design here. And then we have a whole bunch of different custom house designs. We've got a smaller one. We've got a double story one. Over here, we've got like a big watchtower. And then all the way at the back, we have like kind of the main palace area, which is like this big like castle looking thing. Our town center this time is like a bit of a cute little well design combined with a moat kind of around it. We have like a little bridge that goes over the stream as well. We have a whole bunch of little crop farms around the place and these nice gardens as well. And for the final town, we have the one that I'm currently working on in my hardcore series. So I'm sorry as I can't really fly around. So this is the best view that we're probably going to get. But yeah, as you can see, I'm in the process of adding a wall around our entire area. And yeah, I've kind of just combined a whole bunch of the things that I've shown in this video. We've got a fishing dock over here. We've got our mob farm, mine entrance over there, a whole bunch of houses around the place. So we've actually got some specialized like actual workshop areas. We've got an archery range over here. As you can see, there's like the target thing that they'd theoretically shoot at. Down here is our blacksmith. Uh, just let me get down here real quick. Yeah, so this is our blacksmith building. We've got like a nice decorative exterior over here. We've got like our furnace and a bunch of anvils and random stuff. We've got our fully automatic sugarcane farm up here. We've got a nice little park design down here. We've added in this nice bridge design to cover this ravine instead of just using like a bit of a grass bridge, I guess, that I've been using for a while. And then over here, we have our library. We also have our fully automatic crop farm that I showcased previously. And then this area up here is actually my new main base. And if you're looking for some builds to add to any of your new villages that you've started creating, feel free to check out this video right here to get started. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.